Now let's look at how we use conservation of momentum. That is that P initial equals P final. So it's used quite a bit actually in science fiction movies. So you may have seen Gravity a couple of years ago where it's a disaster movie where two really good looking people get stranded in space and debris is flying everywhere. It always comes down to the same thing. If somebody is using something for a propellant to move around in space and then it runs out and they have to save themselves somehow. So what do they do? Well, I wanted to show you a clip of what Sandra Bullock does to save herself, but it's too expensive. So I'm going to reenact it. So I will be playing the part of Sandra Bullock and I'll be here on my little cart that lets me move with no friction. Okay, let's see, so we're doing this. It's like if this bus goes less than 55 miles an hour. Oh no, wrong, wrong one. She's doing this and she's trying to go. It's like, oh, it ran out, it ran out. What did she do? <laughs> ah, yes. Conservation of momentum. Let's see what it looked like. So let's see, Bullock was here. I said, no, this is the ship. She's trying to get to the ship. And uh, let's see, and here she is uh, like that. And she's holding, right, the projectile thing. So there's the velocity of Sandra Bullock and there's the velocity of the, um, the rocket motor thingy she was riding around on, VR. And uh, the initial momentum, we'll say, is zero. She's actually kind of moving when it happened, but it's good enough. We'll say, you're starting at rest, need to get to the ship. So what do you do? We all know what you do in this movie and in many other movies, is you throw it. So it didn't have any propellant left, so she just threw the thing, and now the little rocket rider thing is going with some VR that way, and now Sandra Bullock is going with some V Sandra Bullock this way. But the key is the final momentum is what? It's still zero. And you may not have noticed because I left my little vector hats off all the velocities, but when you add up momentum, you're adding vectors. And even though these might have, um, the, the velocities themselves might not be zero, there is some speed, each one has speed. Uh, since the directions are opposite, the momentum can cancel and you get zero final momentum. So that's how you survive the space disaster. Now, if we want to analyze this, say we know a lot of these numbers. Say we know Sandra Bullock's mass and we know the mass of the little thing that she was holding, the rocket thing, and she threw it at some velocity. We want to know how fast does she go back. What if we want to solve this problem in terms of a physics problem? Well, you could do it with kinetics. But to use kinetics, you're going to get in trouble because you're going to need the detailed force as a function of time. When you throw something, you kind of push it, and maybe it's constant, but how long? So that would be a complicated thing you would need to know. You could solve it, and later in the class, we might have used energy. And energy is conserved, but where did the energy come from? It came from her muscles. She threw it. So you would need the internal energy that was converted from the muscles. Hard to get, usually not given in a physics problem. But finally, you could do it with momentum. And this is the way to go because we know that the final momentum has to be zero because the initial momentum was zero. If the final uh, momentum is zero, then we know that the mass of the rocket times the velocity of the rocket uh, going this way, we'll go ahead and put the vector sign on it, plus the mass of Sandra Bullock times the velocity of Sandra Bullock has to equal zero, and it can't equal zero because these are opposite directions. So if we just switch to vector components, then you'd find this one would be negative, and you could bring it over here, and you'd just find that the mass of the rocket times the speed of the rocket would be equal to the mass of Sandra Bullock times the speed of Sandra Bullock. And you'd probably be looking for how fast she goes back. A classic question is, does she make it back to the ship in time before her oxygen runs out? Right. So you calculate how fast and how far to the ship, and does she make it? And if it's a nice professor, he has the astronaut survive. If it's a cool professor, astronaut dies. So anyway, that's the basic conservation momentum 1D problem that you're always doing. Initial, final, and then look at how things change. 
And in special cases, you can see now how some problems are really easy to solve with momentum, where they'd be hard with kinematics or energy.